What do Charlie Shrem, Tim Draper, Caitlin Long, Don Tapscott, Justin Sun, John McAfee, and Brittany Kaiser all have in common? All of them are delivering a keynote speech at Virtual Blockchain Week. With media partner Cointelegraph, this will be the most viewed online crypto conference of the year. Register now for free at virtualblockchainweek.com. How do you give back to those in need when you're the biggest crypto exchange in the world? You create a charity division, donating a portion of your profits to various causes and encouraging others to do the same. That's exactly what Binance has accomplished by setting up Binance Charity. And today we welcome Jared Wynn, Senior VP of Charity with Binance, to the show. We discuss the various efforts Binance is focused on and bring you up to date on their COVID-19 focus. It's the Do Good Stuff, episode number 394 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, two. Who's bad? Hello, friends all around the world in all the countries that this podcast reaches. Welcome to the podcast of the bad cryptoness. I am the calm of Joel, and that is the right of Travis. That's true. And, and not only our friends, the acquaintances. People we barely know, people we don't know, people we don't ever want to know. Some people who, who, who say they know me, I, I was just, before we came on here, some dude posted that um, he disagreed with something that I posted on Facebook, but he uh, were friends and personal friends in IRL. And I'm looking at him going, who is this? No, we're real friends in real life. I'm like, Who? No. I, I oh, you know, we, I'm putting you on 30 days news right now. Like not even, not even a close business acquaintance. I, and I just, I don't get that at all. Anyway, we're all friends here. We welcome all. It doesn't matter what your take is on what's happening in the world. It doesn't matter what your religion, your politics, your race, your creed, your shoe size, you know, whether you prefer in and out to five guys, although I can't imagine why you would. Uh, this is, you know, we're all about the cryptos and blockchain here. It's true. It doesn't matter if you like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, whatever that shit that Craig Wright put out, that one. Um, <laughs> Bitcoin SV. <laughs> Bitcoin Cardboard. Bitcoin. Whichever one. Whichever one you like. Aluminum. We're just glad. We're just glad you're here and listening to us because we love you guys. And this is a fun episode today. Uh, it, it's actually really cool because we are chatting with Jared Wynn, who is working with Binance Charity, and we got some interesting news on that. But before we do that, how about you hit the show sponsor, Mr. Joel Com? I don't want to hit them. I mean, I mean just hit them up. Just you know, that's like not nice. They sponsor the show. I'm like, Poof! oh, ow. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Would you like to sponsor us some more? So uh, Clinton Donnelly, I just floored you there. Sorry. Yeah. Hope you didn't, you know, get hurt. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You're helping a lot of people. And that's because Clinton has crypto tax audit. You might not have to file your taxes in the United States until July now, but that doesn't mean you don't need to be proactive in protecting yourself from a tax audit from the Internal Revenue Service. Clinton's got a great service. It's called CryptoTaxAudit.com. You can have peace of mind, save money with ongoing crypto tax audit protection. This is something you want to have in place before the IRS comes knocking. Check it out today, CryptoTaxAudit.com. Hey, and I also want to say, I guess this show is this actually going to be coming out on Easter, right? Uh, yeah, the Easter Sunday, e the evening of Easter Sunday. Right on. Well, happy Easter out there to everyone, all of you Easter worshipers. Remember yeah, last year? Remember Easter. last year? When the, like that was the buzz, like whenever that crazy stuff happened last year and they called them instead of Christians, like they were like Easter worshipers. Sure. And yeah. uh, happy Passover to all my Jewish brethren as well. And may the, uh, the angel of COVID-19 pass your door and uh, everybody be healthy. Now, this interview today is actually a two-parter because we first interviewed Jared Wynn, the Senior Vice President of Charity at Binance, about six weeks ago. And there's a lot of great content in uh, in the interview, but you know what happened since then? Well, the coronavirus crisis hit. So we're going to play you the first part of the interview, and then we're going to pop in really quick, say yo, and then we're going to play the second part, which is the the update from last week. So let's go ahead and go to the show. 
So what do you do if you're the world's biggest crypto exchange and you've got just pools and pools of money to deal with? Hopefully you're going to do some good stuff with some of those profits. And that's exactly what CZ has designed the Binance Charity Foundation to do. We've got with us right now the Senior Vice President of Charity at Binance, Mr. Jared Wynn, who's winning every day and winning again now because he's here with us on Bad Crypto. Welcome, Jared. Well, thank you so much, Joel. Happy to be here and uh, really excited to be talking about this with you guys. You guys uh, are yeah, a lot of names can be punny in itself. So you, feel you, free. you two are fortunate. Travis has grew up with always being right, and you've grown up winning. Like, you know, there's people like us out here, Joel Com, Joel.com, well, like Joel you, John Calm. Calm. Yeah, you own the internet. Joel Communist, oh. you know, all this stupid stuff. Yeah, Joel Communist. Oh, totally. Yeah. I'm gonna start using Oh, that. at least your name doesn't actually affiliate with like these different businesses like Jared Galleria, or oh, the best of it was was in high school was Jared the Subway guy. And then that with over time progressed, became far less flattering as he ended up going down his path. So now it's like, oh great, way to affiliate me with that guy. Well, uh, hey, but, Jared's though is like, hey, it's Jared's, get all your big rings and your diamonds there. Exactly. That, that so that's good. Mm-hmm. But in your name, your parents spelled your name differently with two R's, so it looks like you've been jarred. Oh, every phone, every phonetic system I call into, I have to say <laughs> jarred, and it's rather jarred. Oh, yeah, man. jarring, Horrible. right? Jarring. Great stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, auto correct. If you ever type my name in a message on iMessage, it will auto correct to hatred, which is not exactly the most positive of sentiments. It's not but... for someone who's the SVP of charity at Binance. It's just... No, no. Every it's time not I type your name in, it says hatred. That's great. <laughs> Mine's yeah, there's gravity. nothing. There's no gravity. positive spin on that's hatred. It's that's just good. a word that's bad. So, but hey, maybe that's fitting for the bad crypto podcast, right? That's good. All right. Well, that's enough useless banter. Let's get into the meat of things here. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your journey down the crypto rabbit hole. Yeah. So I started in crypto about four years ago. Prior to that, I'd been in tech startups uh, all throughout the Silicon Valley, uh, ranging from telecom uh, all the way to accessories for telecom and then going into AI and deep learning. And uh, the my life's passion, I always wanted to be a teacher or an educator. So I always have found uh, a good deal of excitement and enjoyment out of teaching people new things. Um, and equally, I, I find myself getting frustrated when I don't understand something new. So uh, getting into the world of blockchain, I, I found that it was extremely complex and it was something that I wasn't completely familiar with. And I wanted to learn more. So I started unraveling the onion, so to speak found out that it's a really amazing technology. And uh, fast forward a couple years, and I'm still here. And Binance Charity is doing some fantastic things in the blockchain space, or even the charity and philanthropic space. And when I heard about them and what they were doing, I was almost upset that I hadn't heard about it sooner. And I, I told them I wanted to help. And that's why I'm here. I, I'm now the senior VP of charity at Binance, and we're pushing our for, our efforts forward in North America um, and areas outside of Africa, which is the main focus that we had in the last year. Now we're looking to expand that and do some things closer to home with the mission of showing people, uh, well, for one, the mission to help people, but the uh, secondary mission is showing people that blockchain is something to be embraced and something positive that can impact this world. Um, And it's not just a shill. It's not a scam. It's not something to be afraid of. And it's not some pump and dump laundering operation for the dark web. Uh, So that's uh, that's my presence here in a nutshell. No, that's great. And, you know, when you first came, you first came up with us, you started connecting. We were having this conversation because we've chatted now multiple times. We've had a couple phone calls. We've met in person. And then I think we hung out even in, I think we're in Miami hanging out. And uh, and that's great. And so whenever you started, like you had your own blockchain agency. So this this is very unique. So you said, hey, you were actually doing some pro bono stuff for Binance, helping them out. And then they ended up bringing you on. So I just think that's such an interesting sort of approach that you took. It's almost like you're willing to pay it forward right? And help out these causes, these companies that you like to sort of stand out. If you could maybe talk about your approach on that, because I think that's such a, there's such a unique lesson in there for folks. Absolutely. And that's the thing about blockchain is, is that there's a lot of opportunity, but there's not enough talent for it. And there's also a lot of people who otherwise exclaim that they're interested in working in blockchain, but might not understand the fundamentals behind it. So when I, I actually, I was on a panel with uh, Jill Nee of the, the Binance Charity Foundation, 
And that's when I first heard about what Binance Charity was doing. And I, I, I mentioned I was disappointed that I hadn't heard about it sooner. And at that point, I said, you know, let me help you out. I, I want to get you guys some exposure here in the United States with what you're doing because it's something fantastic. And I think it's exactly what the space needs to drive adoption and otherwise educate the general public on what it takes for people to support blockchain and not be afraid of the technology itself. So I, I jumped in head first. I started representing them and uh, pitching them to different events, to different media publications. Uh, we actually have a segment that's going to be re recurring on the NASDAQ with regards to the impact that we are making with our different focuses. And with that, I, because I had I put in you know a good amount of time each week, they saw the value that I could provide and otherwise thought it might be a good opportunity for me to be full-time. So with all that said, I... You know, my blockchain marketing agency, uh, it really opened some doors for me. We still have some stuff going there. I've pivoted back my focus uh, quite a bit on it. Uh, but it, if not for that, it, it, none of this would have happened. And uh, I'm a big believer in fate and always going towards those open doors. So, you know, it, I say to anybody who's interested in working in blockchain, where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, and if you feel that there's value you can provide to any organization, just start doing it. And if you do it well, I wouldn't see why somebody wouldn't bring you on. The website is Binance Charity, and when you go there, you can see that so far, 1,488 donors have sent over 643 Bitcoin as of February 24th, 2020, when we're recording this interview. That is, in current day Bitcoin dollars, that's over $6 million that has been donated to a number of different projects. Uh, Humanity First Project for Refugees, Australian Bushfire Donations, Binance Lunch for Children. How do you decide which projects get put onto the Binance Charity website? So there's a, a significant amount of vetting that goes through it. And I'll dial back just a little bit further on that and say what our mission is in, in being different. I, so there's a huge disparity between what is blockchain, what is crypto, what is Bitcoin. And we, we don't want there to be confusion between what it is that we're trying to achieve here and what it is that we are trying to achieve is we're trying to solve the problem of transparency and donations to charity. Uh, if you donate to any charity at this stage, and I won't drop names at this point, but if you donate to any any charity, it's uh, the industry standard is about 20% of that donation goes through to the end beneficiary or the person that's in need. Now, that isn't a great number. If you donate a million dollars to think that only two million is going through to the end person, that, that's $8 million that who knows what it's being put towards. All right, it all goes to politician foundations. <laughs> <laughs> it well, definitely surprise. bureaucracy yeah. plays a role. I mean, I can't remember the you might know, Jared, the site that tracks, um, you know, the legitimacy of these organizations and how much yeah. goes to administrative costs. What What is yeah. the site for that? Uh, there's a couple of those, actually. And from what the ones I know, they're they're independent organizations. I don't recall the ones off the top of my head, but they're it, it depends on I think one is like give well is, is one organization. Uh, in addition to that, there's let me take a look. Well, I just uh, I just did a search here and I found one called Charity Tracker. Um, and that's supposed to have some Charity Navigator is another one. Yes. And these are independent organizations, primarily, uh, to my understanding, that kind of do the vetting and the audits of different charities. And um, I think it's more of a set of standards that they have to abide by and they get rated accordingly based on their level of transparency or their verification of where funds are going and the amount of impact that they're making. We're, we're doing something similar to that, uh, although we don't have exactly a transparent record of who it is that we're working or who it is that we're vetting. Um, but the people that we work with go through a very uh, thorough vetting process of ensuring that they are effective in the donations that they, they're receiving. Now, the, the difference with Binance Charity that we're doing is we're utilizing blockchain technology to demonstrate that after the point of donation, you can actually track it going to the end beneficiary's wallet directly. And with that, we guarantee 90 to 100% of that donation passing through to the end beneficiary. We don't take any, and we don't skim any of it. We don't take any of the cost out of it ourselves. Binance Charity is privately funded by Binance. We're all employees of Binance. So there's no overhead costs. The only overhead costs that actually come into play is, is when we're working with an organizational partner, an NGO, 
who is helping us facilitate the process, when which it does take some money to give money. But when we're talking about 5% versus 80%, I think that there's a huge margin of improvement there. And that's what we're trying to achieve. To dial back to the specific question that you had, Travis, uh, the way that we select these partners is we typically work with institutional investors to determine where it is that they want to focus. And that's kind of our work is, you know, hey, if you're investing $10 million this year, why don't we amplify your impact? Instead of making $2 million of impact, work with us. We'll be your partner. We'll be your foundation and your platform to amplify that $2 million to 9 to $10 million. And that's really where our focus is. And in the next year, we really hope to also engage the crypto community and have them take part in this as well. Hmm. Now, is this going to be like a white label solution that other charities are going to be able to sort of utilize? Because I think it's great that Binance is tracking and, and mapping their charity efforts but there's a whole lot of other charities out there who aren't on the blockchain yet. Is there some sort of bridge or some sort of tool that's going to be maybe be created so that this can be open source or other charities can have more transparency? So I think I would be very surprised if something of that didn't form as a result of this engagement as to what we're doing now. I think in the short term, what we are looking for is, is if there are those charitable partners who want to leverage this technology, we can absolutely utilize it or create a project on their behalf when the due diligence is complete. But to actually go through the process of white labeling and creating that solution, I think that there's, you know, it's not an extremely complex process. But I think that there's an adoption that needs to happen or there's education and everything else that needs to happen to help these people pioneer it. And I think that we're a ways out from that in which they re will rely on partners like Binance to facilitate this. Uh, so for the short term, I don't see white label white labeling happening, but I do see us partnering with charities at a larger scale than we are right now. What I like about this is it's kind of set up almost like Kickstarter, right, where you pick which of the causes you're going to give to here on the site. You can scroll through and see details of uh, all the various ones. You could show how many other donations have been made. You could see how many have benefited from it. Um, I'm wondering, since you've come on in this position, which are you most excited about having onboarded? That's a good question. I would say the ones that I'm most excited for are actually the ones that are going to be U.S. engagement. Um, I, being in a background, and Travis, you mentioned it earlier, I have the marketing and PR background. Uh, I don't know a better way to put this, but every I, I feel that people are becoming numb to the Sarah McLaughlin commercials that are showing the hungry children in, in other countries. And it's it's unfortunate. It will never be, for me personally, it will never be less sad. But I don't feel that it's driving the impact uh, or the awareness necessary close to home where we are here in the United States. So what I think I'm, we're long, long past numb, actually, because we've seen those for decades now. And, and I don't yeah. think it's that people don't care. It's, I, I think that we have become desensitized and we feel a sense of powerlessness because we've been seeing this problem has been going on for a long time. What's my little donation going to do? Exactly. Where is the impact? And that's, you know, I was just on another podcast recently where I asked what was it necessary for people to actually, you know, want to take action. And they said, you know, they have to actually see this. And I think that it has to be relative. And I, I completely agree. And I think the way that we'll get that relativity is by doing work domestically in the United States and making an impact here where people can see it. And that's where I think, you know, working on disaster relief or the different uh, epidemics such as the opioid crisis or things of that nature. I think that's where the media needs to see that the crypto community is in support of these efforts, in support of the many problems that we face. And I think that that's what's going to help to drive adoption of cryptocurrency at large or blockchain technology at large is once people start to see those impacts. Well, that's one of the things I think that for, for most people, I think uh, they may not, they may be underestimating how big blockchain can be for charities, right? To be able to track exactly where things go, right? And so, I, I, you know, as I mentioned with the water sort of scenario, I know exactly where that well is. I know exactly where my dollars are going and maybe tell everyone, you know, how right. is blockchain sort of revolutionizing the charity space, because I think it's huge. No, absolutely. And there's what it comes down to is, is the human element of trust. And I've said this before, is that there's always a question of trust and blockchain eliminates that. You know, you run into the situation where you're saying that with your project, you knew that your donation went towards this exact area of that project. And 
you know that because that's what they told you. And heaven forbid if they were telling you anything less than true on that. But mm-hmm. what blockchain does is it li- eliminates that variable in entirety. And where there's yeah. opportunities for greatness, there's also great opportunity for corruption. And what blockchain does is, is that it eliminates that as a possibility because we create the wallets on behalf of these end beneficiaries. We vet them. We, val- we do all the KYC necessary. We create the wallet on their behalf. And then you can see through the ledger that that money did with 100% certainty get into the hands of that end beneficiary. And yeah. there's no question about it. Yeah. What they do after that, though, is a blind spot. But up until the point that they get it, it's completely clear. We do everything up to the point of them receiving it. And, you know, I, I've been at between the rock and a hard place of this part where people have asked, you know, do you have plans to actually ensure that people are spending that in the way that they should be? And it's like, it's really tough because you come to blockchain because it's decentralized and there's no authority around, you know, who can determine how money is being spent. But then on the same token, perhaps there is a need for a smart contract or something of that, which limits the economies that the money can be spent on to ensure that there's an additional line of trust. But then you're like on the double edged sword of is this truly decentralized or are we going to then limit how people can spend this money to otherwise help themselves? But what we can do is, is we can get ninety nine point nine percent of the way in showing that at least the person received the money the way that they should. And then also promise that we verified that that person didn't need the money. But that's a step further than mo- pretty much any other organization can do at this point. So that's really the the niche that we're trying to solve. And I'm sure that there's ways that this will grow beyond it. But, you know, for the first year, I think that we're making pretty good progress. That's pretty awesome. Glad to see Binance leading the way. What would you like our listeners to do to take some action? There's a lot that can be done. Um, I, we talked earlier about just the slightest help can be of the biggest impact. And if you have interest in participating in philanthropy, participating in blockchain, for one, visit Binance.charity. You can make donations through a, a variable of nominations of currencies. Uh, furthermore, follow us on Twitter, follow us on LinkedIn. And if you feel that there's a way that you can tri- contribute to the cause, reach out to us, bcf at binance.com. And we're also more than happy to see if there's ways that we can collaborate and make an impact on the world together. And there's part one of our interview with Mr. Jared Wynn. More in a second, but first want to give a shout out to our sponsor at MobiPay. Moby is spelled M-O-B-I-E. Type it in your browser as mobipay.io. They're giving away $10 in their MBX token, and they have found a way for you to uh, transact with fiat and major cryptos to a global retail marketplace all from your phone. It's such a simple wallet. They want you to kick the tires on it, test the beta. They'll give you $10 in MBX. Go to mobipay.io, check it out, and tell Brandon that uh, Bad Crypto sent you. Say, hey, we sent you. Who do you love? We love Moby Pay. They're doing awesome. We love Moby Pay. And, uh, and now the update, second part of our interview with Jared Wynn from Binance Charity. And we didn't realize we'd be speaking with Jared again so soonly, but, you know, the prior interview was pre-COVID and the world has changed. We're all on lockdown and Binance Charity is stepping up with crypto against COVID. So, Jared, crypto against COVID, you guys have stepped up. I'm looking, you know, timestamp for this interview is April 2nd. I believe the show comes out about 10 days from now. You guys have already raised one point, almost $1.2 million in crypto. Correct. There's actually, there's more that's going to be contributed to that. Uh, within the next day or two, we're going to in- donate another million. And then beyond that, we're, we're dedicating a match campaign as well, in which we're matching donations um, uh, up to another million dollars worth of donations. So collectively, Binance has pledged $5 million towards COVID relief. Uh, but at this point, the crypto against COVID campaign is really about uniting the crypto community and uniting crypto companies uh, to take action against COVID-19. And I think that this is a real opportunity for crypto companies and crypto users alike to show this unity and show the positive impact that crypto and blockchain technology can have on the world. And so I'm looking at Binance.Charity. That's the website. And if you go to Binance.Charity forward slash crypto dash against dash COVID, that is where this uh, particular charity uh, event is being raised, and we can donate there. What is what is the what is the best process? So, if someone wants to go to that website and they donate, 
Like, how does this work as far as taxes and whatnot go? Like, what are some of the benefits for folks? Obviously, we want to help out, but how does that help them when it comes to tax time? Good question. So actually, Binance says uh, we, we launched a blockchain charity foundation in the United States that's a, that is a 501c3 in process. So any donations to our organization is tax deductible in that way. Uh, so in terms of the donation flow, uh, we accept all forms of currency in terms of Bitcoin, uh, BNB, BUSD, and Ripple at this point. So you can make all of your donations through cryptocurrency. And at that, you can see the donation records, the allocation records, and where that money went from the point of donation all the way through to the end beneficiary. And our our main source of aid that we're providing right now is that we're providing masks, uh, PPE, as well as ventilators and other medical needs to hospitals uh, throughout the world. So we're, we're very excited to be helping the crypto community to unite against this cause. And we, we really expect that over the next coming weeks that we will come out on top of this. Yeah, I'm looking on the page here to see exactly where the funds are going. Is there does it list somewhere on here specifically where cool. the equipment is going? Yeah, so specifically, if you click on donation records or allocation records, you can see that as of right now, uh, as of April 2nd, there's only one, and that's Italy. We allocated $160,000 worth of resources as we're sending them masks uh, and ventilators and a number of other equipment. As uh, we have a lovely community manager there who has really done an amazing job in terms of getting us engaged with the appropriate end beneficiaries. So that's probably the toughest part right now is, is not only is it a matter of finding the masks and finding the supplies, but it's a matter of getting the supplies to the people that need it, which there's clearance issues uh, amongst being able to even reach the people that need them at this point, as there's just so much chaos. Right. Well, one, of, one of the things on that page, when you click donation records for people, some have chosen to be anonymous, but other people are putting their names in the currency they gave. And if you scroll down the page, you can see crypto.com gave 6,666 BNB and Charlie Lee gave a Bitcoin, at least according to if that's the real Charlie Lee, that's the name that's on it. Right. I suppose right. with crypto, it that could still be fake news. Right, right. So I, I can affirm that Crypto.com did make a donation. I, I assisted them through that flow. Uh, Charlie Lee, I, I would imagine that if he did it, it would be in Litecoin, but we don't accept it. Um, but otherwise, uh, yes, uh, we can show with transparency every donor. Um, it's a great opportunity for people to join forces at this point. And for joining the Crypto Against COVID Alliance, uh, we, we did give different graphics and representation to show that you're part of this. Um, and as well, we, we hope to have a lot more media exposure around these efforts as we continue to, to support this. That's a really great cause. So so what's next for, for Binance Charity and what are some of the other initiatives you guys are working on? So we have other initiatives that we're working on, uh, a lot of which have been put on pause as I guess that's in tandem with our lives in general. Mm, true. Uh, so we have things that are in the pipeline, but I think that until the next month or two surpasses, we have no idea what things are going to look like or where our focuses are going to be. So right now we are heads down on COVID relief. Um, we invite any volunteers or people who think that they can help us in terms of getting supplies and uh, medical equipment in the hands of those who need it. Uh, so please do reach out at bcf at binance.com. And we're, we're always open to a helping hand in that way. That's great. The website, again, Binance.Charity. If you scroll down the page, you'll see the featured projects. And the first one that pops up there is Crypto Against COVID. And we're looking forward to seeing that crypto donation total increase. Uh, Jared, thanks for the update. And thank you. I think that's the first time that we've done that, Mr. Travis, right? Where we've had a interview and then needed to do an update for that same person because of what's going on in the world. Well, it is an interesting time. And, you know, as as we mentioned, or we had discussed this with, with them, you know, we're doing virtual blockchain week that's going on in, what, about about two weeks, I guess 13 days from the time that you're yeah. listening to this. Yeah, two, and, two weeks from the night the show releases, right? Yeah. And so that's exciting. So we're really excited about that. But what's cool about this now is uh, Binance, we're going to be we're going to be donating with them, right? We're doing something with Binance Charity. 
Yeah, we're, you know, as of now, we're still waiting for, you know, to finalize everything, but they've definitely indicated an interest, you know, for those of you that are purchasing the VIP tickets, because the conference is free, but Mm -hmm. we're adding a lot of value for VIPs. And currently the price is $97. It's going to go up really soon. So if you haven't gotten your VIP ticket yet, it's 97 bucks, go do it. Half of that is going to be designated to a uh, a COVID-19 related charity. And we are looking at the uh, crypto for COVID, which is on Binance charity site. We've just got to finalize a couple things to make sure that everything's going to flow there as we intend. But half of your VIP ticket experience is going to go directly to that charity. So I would you know, really recommend you go ahead and get that VIP ticket now. Shake your VIP thing. I don't even know what that would look like. I don't, I don't know. I just want to shake a VIP. I mean, if you had a badge, imagine your virtual badge. Also, we're getting emails from people asking when we're going to have another NFT. We will be offering an NFT for Virtual Blockchain Week, and VIPs are going to get a special limited edition NFT from Bad Crypto that only VIPs get. So there's another reason to go ahead and sign up for the VIP experience. And you can do that by going to virtualblockchainweek.com. Scroll down the page and order your ticket. Yeah, so we've had eight regular NFTs, a couple from events that we've been to, and then we've had a bunch with different uh, guests that we've had on the show. So I think our uh, Virtual Blockchain Week uh, will be the first one will be number nine and then the vip uh, will be number 10 for them yeah. so be awesome yeah. and then there will be more of them so please do go register we're really looking forward to this event in case you missed justin's son of tron has now agreed to uh to speak at the event as has don tapscott uh, and Akon, the rapper. And, oh, that's right, Akon. We just interviewed Akon for an upcoming episode because he is, you know, launching a a coin city in Senegal, there in Africa, as well as the a coin project. The dude's got some serious vision. Interview with him coming up. Interview with John McAfee coming up. We're just going to keep out, uh, keep pumping out some great content for you guys because we want you to uh, to continue telling the world that. Bad Crypto is the one-stop destination for all the crypto hip-hop. There you go. Great stuff. Thank you so much again, everyone. Happy Easter, happy Passover, all those good things. And as always... What? Stay back. Oh, okay. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto, LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.